On today's show, the 12-inch MacBook Revival, M3 iPhones, Apple's most missed products, MacBook Pro redesigns, iPhone event dates leaked, AirPods Max refresh, 15-inch MacBook Air, Apple's full release predictions, M2 Pro MacBook pricing, and is Bethesda trolling Apple? Want the latest Apple news leaks and rumours? Subscribe and ring the bell. This show is going to be all about your questions, so let's get into the first one from Jay Sanchez, iCave Answers. Do you think there is going to be a new 12-inch MacBook with an M-series chip? Now, if you go back to before Apple released any Apple Silicon uh, devices, but once they'd announced that they were going to transition to Apple Silicon and they'd showed us the developer transition kit with an a 12Z inside. We all thought that A14X would be what would power the MacBooks and we'd heard that they were developing a fanless MacBook and that was exactly what we thought was going to be coming because the 12 inch MacBook never had a fan inside it but the MacBook Air did. It turns out they just took that fan out of the MacBook Air and used that chassis. Mark German has come out recently and said that there is likely to be a 12 inch MacBook being revived as well as the 15 inch MacBook Air. So where it's going to sit in the range is unclear whether this is going to be like a MacBook SE that is going to take the M1 chip and put it into a cheaper, smaller form factor. Bear in mind that the original MacBook was never cheaper, it was more expensive because of it being so thin and light. But that form factor does make sense for Apple Silicon because it is far more battery efficient, uh, far more power efficient than any of the Intel chips have been in the past. So it's, it remains to be seen if that is actually going to happen or if it's something that they're developing and not necessarily going to release in the end. Time will tell. I think it's probably definitely being developed. Whether it's actually going to come out, I don't know. Evan Rogers asks, IK Vance's bold prediction, Apple will put the 3 nanometer M3 into the iPhone 15. Now, that is a very bold prediction, and I kind of see where you're coming from because 3 nanometer chips are going to be much more efficient than the, uh, the current 5 nanometer chips which are extremely efficient already, let's be completely honest, but the idea that you would be able to get that amount of power into a, an iPhone and uh, use it, I don't think it will happen. I'm pretty confident that it won't, but if they were to do it, it would go into an iPhone Pro only, uh, and then maybe the A-series chips go in the regular iPhones. Maybe that's something that they're working on, uh, but basically the iPhones don't need those extra performance cores. The vast majority of what you do on an iPhone runs on the efficiency cores, the power cores, the performance cores, only actually sort of spin up when you need real bursts of speed. The point of having four efficiency cores and only two performance cores in the iPhones is because of that. The, v the vast majority of what you do on an iPhone doesn't need that amount of power. M3 might just eat too much power even being on three nanometer for the, uh, the thermal capacity and the battery life of an iPhone. Tim Kinetics asks, IK answers, Apple have killed off many products over the years and simply an, or simply announced a product and never released it, RFP Air Power. Which Apple product that is no longer with us or never got released do you think had the most potential and which one do you think was the most wacky or interesting? Uh, yeah, Air Power was an interesting case. They announced it and then they basically came back a couple of years later and said, yeah, we can't actually make this work. Um, very much like... AirTags for a long time were just being rumoured and rumoured and rumoured and they were sitting on the shelves and never actually got released um, until, what, last year? Um, yeah, spring last year is when AirTags finally arrived. I'm not 100% sure. I think one of the really interesting things that Apple looked like they were going to be doing at one point was their own TV set where it would be the whole shebang panel, Apple TV built in all of that kind of thing. Uh, I think the other thing that's going to be really interesting is Apple Glass, not the full VR headset, but the actual augmented reality glasses. Um, whether they're actually going to come to fruition or not is another matter. Again, this is how much technology can you fit into regular glasses. I know Snapchat and Ray-Bans have done the kind of snap glass or whatever it's called, uh, but that's basically just a camera in some glasses. You don't get any real augmented reality into those. I know some people are moving into that. Whether it's enough for what Apple would like, I don't know. But Apple doesn't really come out with wacky stuff very often. Generally, it's all kind of... It all makes sense within the scheme of things. I think everyone thought that the AirPods were pretty wacky when they first came out. Um, but I think... Uh, Time has told that we love those. The other wacky thing that I think has been rumoured is that robot arm with an iPad on it. That 
terrifies me entirely. Random Nassar asks, IK okay, answers, will Apple make the 16 inch and 14 inch M4 slash M4 Max thinner or do you think that the next redesign will be bulkier and is there a possibility of getting a bezel-less MacBook in the future? Yeah, I think we will get to bezel-less. Um, eventually, we are just pushing the, the boundaries of the technology and bezel-less is kind of, it's always going to have some bezel because otherwise the screen's going to fall off the side. Um, but in terms of whether they go thicker or thinner, I don't know. It really depends on what the battery technology is like by then. Um, I don't think it's going to be as soon as the M4. It might be M4, maybe M5 generation uh, is when we will probably see some kind of refinement to the physical design of the MacBook Pros, but not until then. Randomness R asks, I gave answers, will the iPhone 15 get a full redesign? My wife is due for an upgrade, but I don't want her to get the 14 Pro Max if the 15 gets a redesign please advise thanks honestly we don't know it tends to be that the iPhones get a three-year design life pretty much before the next full redesign and that would lead us up to the iPhone 15 but we don't know what it will look like unless it is what um, John Prosser was looking at this year. I'm sure if that is still in the works, we will hear about it more. Uh, we are hearing about the periscope cameras, which might need a little bit more thickness in the body, um, but it could be flat across so that we don't actually get camera bumps anymore, which I think would be a very big win because I think it will reduce the need for cases as well. If they could maybe make the body, the back panels, could we be looking at carbon fiber back panels, which would be a lot less kind of brittle um, than glass, also be kind of transparent to radio waves and wireless charging? That might be something interesting to look at. If they make it thicker, but it gets lighter because they go titanium and carbon, I don't know. But I wouldn't hold off for a whole year to get a potential redesign because generally when the redesigns come, that doesn't mean that you get more features, you just get a different look. Random Nassar asks IK Vances, I'm excited for the Apple Watch Pro. Sam Cole leaked the September event today, saying the event will happen on September the 6th. What do you think? Will we get AirPods Pro 2 and AirPods Max refresh at the same event? Apple has started filming the event already. Yes, it looks like September the 6th is our iPhone day, which means that they'll be coming out about a week, a uh, week and a half later on the 13th. That would be the Friday. So uh, mark that in your diaries and make sure that you are not working on September the 6th. That is going to be an important day for everyone. In terms of the event being filmed, yeah, we're only a month out, so you would hope that they would be getting ready for it. At this point, they will have prototype devices. They will all be there. Interesting though that we haven't actually seen any physical leaks of products coming out of the supply chain yet because they are definitely there um, But I'm sure as the weeks go on we will see some physical leaks of the products uh, In terms of AirPods Pro and AirPods Max, it looks like we'll get AirPods Pro um, With their refresh. It's not a redesign, but a refresh maybe colors don't think so though and AirPods Max I'm not thinking we'll be getting this year but more on that in a moment. Randomness R asks, I gave answers, are we still expecting AirPods Max refresh this fall? Any chance we will get a redesign or will that be 2023 and 2024? So in terms of the AirPods Max, I don't think we're gonna get a redesign this year. I don't think we're gonna get a redesign at all for a good few years. Remember that most Apple products do get two, three, maybe four generations before they get redesigned, and this is still on its first generation. So you will get a refresh with updated chips potentially, new features on the inside, but I don't think we'll get a visual refresh of these devices anytime soon, possibly even like 2026, 2027, before we actually get a physical new look other than potentially colors. Random Nassar asks, I gave answers, when do you think Apple will release the 15 inch MacBook Air? I tried the 13.6 inch, me and my wife loved it, but the screen is too small for us. She has an M1 Max 16 inch that she uses, but loved for the portability of the 13.6 for taking it on the go. The 15 inch would be perfect for us. I'd put money aside for it. Come on, Apple, give us the 15 inch Air already. It looks like spring is the most likely for this. That would be when we would get the new kind of MacBook Air coming. As far as we're hearing, I'm still not 100% convinced that it is going to be coming out this year. I feel like they might wait until June next year, put the M3 inside it. It makes very little sense to me that they would release a 15-inch MacBook Air with an M2 in it just before the M3s come out uh, because it is going to be the base M2 chip. Uh, I don't see that they would put an M2 Pro in there. It doesn't make any sense to me because you're not going to have the connectivity to make that work. Uh, it's going to be a bigger drain on the battery and the, um, the, the MacBook Airs are going to have a smaller battery than the Pros. So yeah, it just doesn't make too much sense to me. I think uh, spring... At the very soonest, 
probably more likely to be in June so that when they release the M3, they go MacBook Air, maybe 86, the 13-inch uh, MacBook Pro, and bring in that 15-inch uh, model at the slightly higher price point. And from what Apple's done in the past, it's normally a $200 premium over the base model. So the 14 to the 16 inch is a $200 premium on the MacBook Pros. So I would expect it will be about the same on the MacBook Airs. If the MacBook Airs get a price drop, maybe from $11.99 to $10.99, then we would be looking at $12.99 for the 15 inch Air, which would be pretty awesome. NH asks, IK answers, what is your full forecast for Apple releases? What will be released in September, in late fall, and not until 2023. So in September, we will be getting our Apple Watches. That makes all the sense in the world. We will be getting our iPhones, the 14, the 14 Max, the 14 Pro, and the 14 Pro Max. Those will all be September. I think we'll also probably get our base iPad and probably an iPad mini refresh. That would make sense too. Then I think once we've got past that September event with the iPads, the iPhones and the watches, then we will go to our October event. And that was when we will get our MacBooks, our MacBook Pros, our Mac minis with M2 and M2 Pro. And I think we will maybe even get the Mac Studio with M2 uh, Max in it as well. Um, because we'll be getting that in the MacBook Pros anyway, and then the Ultra chips and potentially the new Mac Pro would be coming in spring of 2023. That would make the most sense to me. I think we'd also probably get our iPad Pros with M2 in them at the October event because it does seem like the M chips, which will be coming in October, which use Stage Manager and all of those other bigger features, because I guess uh, Apple could really just release the weather app as a standalone app if they wanted. I don't think it needs iOS 16 to run. They could just wait until uh, October to release iPadOS 16 uh, and then give Stage Manager to the Macs and the iPads at the same time. And perhaps those M2 iPad Pros are also getting some extra features that we haven't heard about yet. Blob asks, I gave answers, I'm totally torn between what to get. How much do you think the M2 Pro will cost for a 512 16 gig system? Is the M1 Pro too dated with M3 Air on the way? I'm not a power user, but I do want something to last. Maybe I should be buying the M2 Air and just moving on with my life. Having to split eight gig in half for parallel sounds a bit too low in 2022. So I would say that the, M, uh, the M2 Pro is probably gonna come in at exactly the same pricing as the M1 Pro. I don't think there's gonna be any price bumps there. They did all the price bumps with their um, redesign this will basically be a processor refresh and it will come in at the same pricing i i believe i don't think they're gonna up the pricing for that uh, so that's my expectation let me know in the comments what you guys think you can always go up to 16 gigs of memory on the m2s but then just add some external storage to run your parallels on that would work just as well team kinetics asks ik advances skyrim has now become a meme for how many devices have been ported to including alexa devices digital calculators pregnancy tests and smart refrigerators are bethesda uh, simply trolling at this point that in 2022 there is no native Mac port of Skyrim. I don't think so because I'm pretty sure they haven't built uh, native versions of Skyrim for pregnancy tests and smart fridges. I think that's just that people have been able to port them over and, and just play with them and this is all enthusiast stuff. This is not what they're doing. However, I do think that that kind of game is exactly the sort of thing that would work well on the Mac. I think it's a fairly old title, I guess. I don't even know. I don't keep up with games that well. But... Um, I'm, I'm sure it would run absolutely fine anyway if you put it through Crossover or you put it through Rosetta if there's a Mac version. I don't know, but uh, Macs are still a very small part of the overall PC market, and I, I just, I'm not sure that it's worthwhile for developers yet to develop their games on both platforms. I wish it was. Um, but I just don't think it is. And that's it for today's show, guys. If you've got questions for the next one, hit me up down in the comments, hashtag IKVanswers. Thanks to all the Patreons over here who keep the lights on in the studio, which is why I'm so sweaty. Want the latest Apple news leaks and rumours? Subscribe and ring the bell.